Hello, I'm Kelly Harangalanti. Welcome back to our final installment of Tempest in a Teapot. We hope you've enjoyed our video post since November 2nd as we've discussed the happenings in Boston that led to the event known around the world as the Boston Tea Party. Thursday, December 16th was indeed a tense day of activity. Jonathan Clark rode out to Provincetown to secure his cargo of tea from the William, which beached on the backside of Cape Cod. The body of the people reconvened an Old South meeting house. The number of an estimated 5,000 inhabitants of Boston and surrounding towns. Francis Roach was ordered to protest against the Customs House, not giving him a pass, and was ordered to obtain a pass from Governor Hutchinson to have the Dartmouth set sail that very day for London. Roach agreed to ride out to the governor's estate in Milton, seven miles outside of Boston, but did not return until 5.45 p.m. The governor said that he is willing to grant anything consistent with the laws and his duty to the king, but that he could not give a pass unless the vessel was properly qualified from the customs house. Mr. Roach then had two questions put to him. Would he have the Dartmouth set sail under the present circumstances? To which he replied, that would be his ruin. He was then asked if he intended to unload the tea. He replied that he did not, but if the proper authorities demanded it of him, he would comply for his own safety and security. A large outcry filled Old South Meeting House, shouting Ma from the balconies. It was patriotic leader Dr. Thomas Young who jumped to Mr. Roach's defense and insisted that he had done everything that had been asked of him since the arrival of the tea weeks ago and should be given no ill treatment by the town. A great commotion follows, during which Samuel Adams reportedly declared, this meeting can do nothing more to save this country. John Hancock allegedly remarks, let every man do what is right in his own eyes. Merchant John Andrews, recalling the night, remarks that you'd thought the inhabitants of the infernal regions had broke loose. From that moment, the fate of the tea was no longer in the hands of the body of the people. Rather, it was determined by an unknown group of men who executed a highly coordinated secret plan to destroy the tea at Griffin's Wharf. Hundreds of men descended towards the wharves. First-person accounts note that a handful of participants had donned blankets over their overcoats, dressing loosely as Native Americans, as the Sons of Liberty had been dubbed Samuel Adams Mohawks by members of Parliament in the past. Many of these men attempted to obscure their identities with a bit of lamp black or soot upon their faces. But for other participants, this aspect was not so important, as it was also noted that many participants were not disguised at all. The participants or players of the evening boarded the Dartmouth, Eleanor, and Beaver, hauled the chests of tea out of the holds, and with the use of hatchets, broke open the wooden chests and dumped 92,000 pounds of loose leaf tea into Boston Harbor. At the end of a three hour span, a total of 340 chests of tea were emptied into Boston Harbor as hundreds of Boston's inhabitants watched. The military never mobilized, and other than Admiral Montague threatening some of the participants leaving Griffin's Wharf, nothing of note transpired or has survived for the remainder of the evening. The following day, John Adams wrote in his journal, this is the most magnificent movement of all. There is a dignity, a majesty, a sublimity in this last effort of the Patriots that I greatly admire. The people should never rise without doing something to be remembered something notable and striking. This destruction of the tea is so bold, so daring, so firm, intrepid, and inflexible, and it must have so important consequences and so lasting that I can't but consider it as an epoch in history. In the days following, as the debris of tea dispersed along the South Shores, news also began to spread across the globe. On December 21st, Captain James Scott who, if you recall, brought news of the impending tea ship's arrival, departed Boston. In addition to the cargo of tar and oil, he carries news of the destruction of tea to England. Once the news reaches Parliament and King George III, life as we know it in Boston will certainly change. We want to thank you all for watching Tempest in a Teapot and supporting our lead up to the 245th anniversary and annual reenactment of the Boston Tea Party. 
We had an unbelievable evening, despite the torrential rains and high winds. We want to thank our friends at Old South Meeting House, the many volunteer reenactors from all over New England, the cast of the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum, and of course, all of the people that showed up at Old South Meeting House and down here at Griffin's Wharf for your efforts that evening. We'd also encourage you to visit Boston, check out all the amazing historical sites, and to learn more about the American Revolution and beyond. Thanks for watching.